Okay, so for number eight, to write these as a radical, oops, this one's going to be the fifth root of x. Now for b, we have to first change that to y, oops, sorry about that, to 1 over y to the 1 third to make our exponent positive. So that becomes 1 over the third root of y. And then for c, there's two answers, two ways you can write c. We can do the cube root of z squared, or you can do the cube root of z all squared. All right, determine which exponent goes in the box. Um, because a starts in the denominator, to move it to the numerator, we have to make it negative, and the square root is then 1 half. Uh, for b, the 4, the x, that's our numerator, and the 5 is the denominator. Now for c, this 18 gets applied to both here. I'm going to do that before I simplify my fraction. Um, so we can make that x... So now 18 and 3 reduces to 6 times 2 gives us 12 in the numerator. If you do that over here, then 2, we can then do 2 times 6 gets me the 12. And then denominator, 18 divided by 6 is 3. So now I can subtract those exponents, and we get 9. Okay, so for D, I'm going to change the radical to a 1 half. And now, because we have a power to a power, we can multiply. And 1 half times 6 is 3. Okay, so now for E, we need to think what, um, sub, what value minus 1 sixth will give us 2 thirds. Let me get some space here. So I can add the 1 6 this side. So we need a common denominator. That is 4 6 plus 1 6, which gives us 5 6. All right, so for 10 to compute um, or simplify, or we have 81 to the negative 1 half. So that means, oops. The negative exponent's going to move that to the denominator for us. And I'm going to think of the 1 half as a square root. And the square root of 81 is 9, so that's 1 ninth. Now for b, I'm going to use my properties of exponents and write that as 27 to the 1 third squared. Because this is saying what times itself 3 times is 27. Well, that's 3 squared, so we get 9. Now for C, 1 to any power is still 1. And then I'm going to have my 10,000 to the negative 1 fourth. So the negative is going to move that to the numerator for me. So what times itself 4 times is 10,000 is 10. So then for 11, um, on the left-hand side of the equal sign, that's like saying x to the n over 4, and it has to equal x to the 8. Because these bases are the same, my exponents have to be equal. So that means n is 32. And then for b... I'm going to rewrite 9 as 3 squared. Now that the bases are the same, we can solve that. I'm going to multiply n to the right, divide by 2, so n is 2.
Okay, Sally solves a radical equation and it gets 25. Is the solution extraneous and justify your answer? Okay, so to justify or to check it, let's plug in 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. So she got 15 equals negative 15, which is not true. So that means x equals 25 is extraneous. Okay, so now we get two answers for 13. We have to check both. So let's check x equals negative 1 here. We'll check x equals 4 here. Um, I actually don't even have to go any further with negative 1. When you square root a number, you will never get a negative value. I could have determined that here as well. So this one is extraneous. So let's check 4. So this is the square root of 12 plus 4, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. So x equals 4 is an answer. It's a solution. Another checking one for the extraneous. All right. So for 14, the cube root of negative 8 that does equal negative 2, so that is not extraneous. It is the solution. All right, sketch the functions. So for a, we have the square root of x, but with the negative coefficient, meaning it's been reflected over the x-axis. If you want, you can choose some x values. I'm going to start with my endpoint of 0. Then I'm going to pick another nice numbers that I can get a square root value of. So zero, zero is our endpoint. One, negative one, four, negative two. And we get our graph this way. It's supposed to stop at that endpoint. There we go. Uh, we could do the same thing for B. I know I can cube root any negative numbers. Negative 27. The cube root of that is negative 3, but I don't have x's that go to negative 27. So let's start with negative 8. We'll go negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So negative 8, negative 2. It would be really helpful um, when you're studying for your exam that if you know the general patterns of the parent graphs for square root and cube root and exponentials and all the graphs we've done this semester. Okay, for C, what I'm going to do to get my table of values is the argument. I'm going to solve these little equations to get some nice points. I'm choosing these resulting values because those are the values that would be under the square root, which would get square rooted. So you notice 0, 1, 4, and 9 are all nice numbers that you can take the square root of. So for my table of values, those are the four points. So now I need to get the y values. That's negative 3. This one's negative 2. Negative 1. Oops. And then zero. And because I know what a square root graph looks like, 
there is C. Now we're going to repeat that process for D. And because the argument is just x, I'm going to choose negative 8. That's sloppy, sorry. Let's fix that. Negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So to evaluate and get the y values, This is negative of negative 2, so that's positive 2 plus 2, we get 4. This is negative of negative 1 plus 2, that's 3. Plug in 0, we'll get 2. That's negative 1 plus 2. And lastly, this is negative of 2, that's 0. So we've got negative 8, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, and 8, 0. You can also check your answers based on the transformations. This was graph was moved up to and reflected over the x-axis. Here's our point of symmetry that was moved up to, and it's been reflected. Okay, what is the domain? Well, it's a square root graph. We know that this argument has to be greater than or equal to zero. The range, so when you plug in zero, our endpoint, it's going to have a y value of 7, but this has been reflected, so its y is less than or equal to 7. Um, if I picture this graph, normally a square root function looks like, looks like this. So being reflected, our graph goes this way. So for what interval is it decreasing? That is from every x greater than or equal to 0. And the endpoint, oh, we got that. That's already 0, 7. Solve. So to eliminate the radical, I'm going to do a power of 3 to both sides. And then divide by 5, so x is 200. So if they need 10 square meters, 10 is our s value. Okay, so we'll square both sides to eliminate the square root. Multiply by 2. Add 5. So our cost is $205. Okay, so for 19, in what year was the population 120,000? So population, and this calculator, I mean this question, you can use a calculator for your arithmetic if you like. So we're going to divide by 60,000. That is 2. Take both sides to the third. And add 1,970. So the year is 1978. Okay, we have the following properties. Domain is x is greater than or equal to 3. 
and the range is less than or equal to 1. So it's going to look like that. Write a function. So this one went to the right, 3, up 1, and has been reflected over the x-axis. So that would look like that. Here's our up 1, right 3, reflected over the x-axis.